must do the crazy mind. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut, shut your mouth. What's going on world? I'm Wesley from A Connection TV, The Network, and I am here to talk about Roa, the latest episode that just aired tonight. I wanted to do this review real fast and right after the episode because I still have it in my head. Usually when I go to sleep and wake up, I don't have the same intense feeling when doing the review, so I just wanted to make sure that I was still on and popping. And I also watched uh, Blood, Sweat, and Heels which I'm gonna review after this. So once you get done watching this, go watch Blood, Sweat, and Heels because that shit was a hot mess. But I, I like that show too. So we start this episode off, wait, 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 before we get all into that, like this video real quick, people. It's easy and free to do. Just click that thumbs up button, all right, and share this on your Facebook and your Twitter. I would appreciate it. And if you have not subscribed to A Connection TV, make sure that you click that subscribe button and make sure it says a D at the end for subscribed. All right, now, Kenya, the wonderful, dark chocolate, beautiful lady to be 65 year old Kenya is entering the scene with Miss Lawrence. Now, I really wanna know what his real name is because it pains me. So, Lawrence and, and, and uh, Kenya are talking at this restaurant and she brings up the whole Savannah trip and Lawrence has to get her together real quick and, and says, what? Savannah? No, it's Savannah. And Kenya's like, oh, oh, whatever. And right off the bat, she goes in to talk about how um, she met this girl named Monique. And she dates this, or she's married to this guy named Chuck. And of course, Georgia, Atlanta, small area, whatever. Everybody knows everybody. So Lawrence is like, wait, hold up. That Chuck? And then right off the gate, Kenya's like, wait, did you fuck Chuck? What else can I talk about on this show to stay relevant? Did you fuck Chuck? Lawrence is like, no, I didn't fuck that Chuck. So right away I'm annoyed because it, it really it really irritates me when people feel that they have to talk about others. And like, okay. Y'all not going on a tangent. Usually when you're discussing someone else, for me, it's for pure conversational purposes. Like, if there's nothing else to talk about and we know someone mutually and that person is cool with the other person and they weren't with us one particular time, then, okay, girl, let me tell you what happened with such and such when we was at such and such. Just, you know, when you be on the phone and ain't got shit to talk about because you're tired of talking about the crap that you see in the news or you're tired of talking about just dumb shit, then, yeah, you're going to mention a mutual person that you know. So I get that. But all parties are cool. So I'm like, all right, the purpose for her even talking about this is just to be like, you know what I'm saying? Because she don't know Monique like that. She don't know Chuck like that. She's just talking just to talk. So I'm over it. At the end of the day, you know, Kenya was trying to start some mess that day anyways. But whatever, I digress. So she leads into Phaedra. And I don't give a fuck what nobody said. Okay, at the end of the day, Regard and, and see what really what really aggravated me even more. I just been I was aggravated the whole beginning of this episode. What really pissed me off even more is when Lawrence had the audacity to say that okay, maybe Phaedra has something to hide because maybe Phaedra doesn't want her skeletons to come out of a closet. That's why she didn't want to go at it with you and blah blah blah. I'm like no no fuck that. Let 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 let's roll that shit back. Let's let's roll clip. Okay, because at the end of the day, there was never really a big issue with Kenya and Phaedra until Kenya started to put the pause on Apollo. We all saw that shit. We all saw that shit from the jump when she was flirting and they was going back and forth and he lifted her up and they jumped in the pool. Fuck that. I'm not here to be your friend. I don't care if you on the show. I don't care if we cast mates or whatever. But that is to the full extent where our relationship or whatever kind of ship we're sailing on is going to go. Because we don't have anything to talk about. There's nothing to talk about. There's no forgetting. After you done said that me and my man got AIDS or probably got HIV on national TV, there's no forgetting that. After you tried to say that my man has been sleeping with you or wanted to proposition you, there's 
no coming back from that. I don't understand why everybody thinks that Phaedra has to be up Kenya's puss. It's not, like, what? And then I'm thinking to myself, get yeah, the fuck right, Lawrence, because I'm sorry, I'm pissed. Because I hate, like, I hate when people have an opinion and they get paid to have an opinion, but their opinions are completely biased. Like, if you're gonna give a, if you're gonna give your opinion, okay, about fashion for the fashion queens, then look like you have some, some fashion. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't sit there and talk about somebody when you know damn well you would not want your ass to be spoken about. That's how I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? So Lawrence, Lawrence cannot tell me that if a dude was hollering at his dude on a sneak tip flirt tip and they were about to get married or whatever, that Lawrence would be trying to befriend this homeboy. Like, that shit would not happen. Lawrence would have slapped his ass or would have... Come on, like, really? So I was a little annoyed because I look at Lawrence as a level-headed individual. Or I have for, like, the situations he'd been, he's been placed in and dealing with the show. But that just went... It just went completely left field. And then this whole Fashion Queens bullshit... I'm just like, come on, son. Like, really? So I was a little annoyed with that whole conversation. Move past that. Because Phaedra don't owe Kenya a motherfucking thing. Like, at this point, really don't, okay? Chuck invites Nene and Phaedra over to another restaurant. It's like always these restaurants are like the meeting grounds for these setups. So, you know, Chuck... In invites Phaedra and Kenya, Phaedra and Nini, sorry, to go back to Athens to visit a boys and girls club because Phaedra and Nini are doing so well and he thinks that they could really influence the kids at the boys and girls club. He's a pussy. I wholeheartedly believe that he's a punk bitch pussy. Okay, he's NF, NF, NHL, no NFL, whatever. He's a pussy. Because you invite these two ladies to go and at a boys and girls club. But the truth of the matter is, you wanted to ask Phaedra about the whole shit with Monique. Fuck, it's not Monique, it's Monique. There's no, there's no O and, and, and Y. Like, when you, no, fuck that. It's Monique. So I'm thinking to myself, like, why couldn't you, why couldn't you be the man, okay? And, and just ask these chicks word up. Like, and why is Nene there? Because y'all, like, I don't, like, I just, like, I was confused. Like, I, I couldn't understand why a grown-ass man will go through all those hoops and hurdles when at the end of the day, and then, and then wait his ass, wait till the, wait till they get their goddamn ass in the car after they done visit the whole Boys and Girls Club and then said, call Nene, call Nene one of the top actresses in the world, and they call Phaedra some most woman something. I'm like, the devil? These chicks are, are successful, but they are not the of anything. Like, what? And then you praise these girls, and then you go put them in the car and say, you was just a jump off hoe? Like, you was a part of the team. Like, like how you not know you were part of the team? I was a millionaire youngin' in, in my prime, and you ain't candy. And they're going to bring another chick into the mix, and the chick ain't even there. That's some pussy shit. I'm sorry. Like, it like aggravates me when I see grown adults or grown men, macho hurrah, hurrah men doing pussy shit on TV. Like I, I just don't get it. Like I really, it, it, I, <laughs> I don't get it. I'm, I'm, I'm connecting like a lot of dots in this review. So it, excuse me, but I don't know. It really pissed me off. Move past that. We get to. Portia, no, um, Cynthia and Mel go in to look at some beads in a bead store because Mel has a bead store or some shit. I'm like, what? I don't, I don't get that. Like, huh? That doesn't make any fucking sense. And so, you know, it, it leads, it's, it's a lead in for Mel to say that I'm going to be staying with you for two months. Uh, huh? Staying with who? Who you staying with? With me? I'm 
thinking to myself, chick, she just got finished telling me on TV that the last time she spoke to you was a year ago when you went the fuck off about her getting married to a man that you claim to not like or that you claim that the marriage is going to fail and you was trying to hide uh, wedding certificates and shit like that. Why in the hell would I think it would be all right for you to just pop up and say, hey, sis, I'm staying with you for too much. The devil. If you got a bead store, your ass need to be hot up in some hotel. And why are you even in town for two? Why are you in town for two months? What is the problem? Aren't you in love with somebody? You say you having sex two to three days or some shit. Aren't you in a relationship? I, I don't know if I missed that part where she said why she has to be there for two months. But that's some bullshit. And then Cynthia... Cynthia was very disappointing to me. I mean, she cried her ass off. She cried her eyes out when Nene read her or, or, or gave her opinion about the whole Noel thing. So she ran and cried about that. But everything else, Cynthia has been strong. She's been strong to Kenya. She damn for sure was strong to Peter's ass this particular episode. She's been strong. So, okay, maybe Nene is, she's only weak to Nene. But I'm like, okay, and uh -oh, then again, maybe not because she was weak to Mel because she allowed Mel to tell her that she's gonna be staying in her house that she tried to that she tried to destroy a year ago. She stayed there for two months. I can understand that. And then I'm not going in order. Fuck the order. And then let's let's go. Let's go to 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 when they walking in the Bailey agency and she's showing her the new place that Peter got without Cynthia motherfucking knowing about. Okay. Whatever, we move past that because I'm thinking Peter and Cynthia got a great relationship. It's, it's working for them. So if it works for them, it works for me. Cynthia's happy and I don't see Peter moping around like a goddamn old ass who can't get his dick up. They're happy. Okay, beautiful thing. So I'm like, all right, no judgment free zone. Okay, we fly past this car, this beautiful ass brand new looking car that's just sitting in his agency. Like, Huh? Like, why is the car even parked in the building? I couldn't understand that. Okay, I couldn't get that, but whatever. Mel, her troublemaking ass, okay, decides to comment because Cynthia made a comment. Now, apparently, Cynthia, Cynthia and Mel had some sisterly bonding bullshit at the goddamn bead store about sex and how she can't give it up all the time and Peter's annoyed and then Mel is like, well, if you're not able to give it up all the time, it's not anything to do with you being busy. It's you. And, I mean, that's the only thing Mel made sense to. Um, because, yeah, you you coming out of the picture out of, all of a sudden wanting to stay with me for two months unannounced, that ain't happening. I don't care who you are. That's not happening. And you got you, you have your own house to stay in. That's not happening. I'm not, I'm not here for that. But when Peter comes in and says, hey, Mel, how you doing? Gives her bomb and dab. I'm like, okay, yeah, Peter's still sized up about it because you offer the chick hug. You don't give a dab. I mean, that's your wife's sister. But I, no, pro no problem. I can't fault you at that because the bitch, why is she in my sight? Like, that's what I'm thinking. You should not be in my sight right now. Right? Am I the only one? Did y'all like this video yet? Okay, vibe with me. We're adopting similar connections despite our differences because some of y'all been saying y'all been feeling my thought patterns about this the season of Roa. Some of y'all may not be feeling it, but vibe with me. Adopt a similar connection despite our differences. Peter rolls in. He ain't vibing with this chick. No problem. Cynthia's like, well, guess what? Surprise, I'm still giving you Christmas gifts, although Christmas is over with, but then again, Christmas wasn't. But still. Surprise, Mel is going to be here for two months. Peter's like, here where? <laughs> where? Cynthia's like, staying with us for two months. If Peter did not have a look that could kill, like if Peter's look could freaking commit murder, Cynthia would have been dead. Mel and Cynthia would have been dead because Peter looking at this chick like, what? Are you serious? Peter flips off. Peter flips off. And then Mel is like, Cause Peter's like, well, how are you gonna do this without consulting me? <laughs> what? Wait, hold up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ha. Huh? Ha. Huh? What you say? What you say, Peter? Without consulting you, you don't want this warehouse 
and you done bought this car without consulting Cynthia. Now the only way it is okay, remotely, being that you are in a, a marriage right now, is if you bought everything with your fucking money. Cause if it's your money, she can't say shit. But if y'all got joint stuff, and the stuff is together that's joint, and you, what? Uh-uh, I wasn't feeling that. I'm not feeling that if that's the case. But if it's not, then Peter has every right to be upset with Mel showing up unannounced. Because I, but then again, either way, either way, I mean, Mel, Mel tried to destroy the marriage. Why? Why, Cynthia? Why? Come on, son. I don't get that. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Whatsoever. Peter gets pissed. He walks off. I liked how Cynthia shut up Mel, though. I really did. That was, that was cool. That showed some cojones. I guess if Cynthia's only weak to Nene. Fast forward to Portia. Portia got this beautiful 8,000 six bedroom home. How the, is she gonna afford this? Her, her spousal allowance or her spousal support is 5,000 a month. That house, doesn't really look like five thousand a month to me. Maybe it is, and it, maybe it is in Georgia. Maybe, I mean, maybe that's how it is down there. I don't know. But I'm like, she has expensive taste. I thirty two, but then again, thirty two, and she's shopping with her mother, and her mother is buying all of her stuff for her two puppies. Like, like, where they do that? Like, how are you remotely? remotely satisfied with your life as a grown adult living at home with your mother and having your mother do everything for you. How are you remotely capable of talking any kind of, having any kind of conversation about independence as a grown black woman, not even, okay, fuck the race, as a grown woman. I, I just, I, I'm, 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 I'm lost. I'm lost, like Mona would say, I'm lost, because I just don't get it. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Fast to the forward. Fast to the forward. Miss, um, Miss Candy Mother, Miss Joyce. Miss Joyce. Goes to J, Miss J, I don't know if it's Miss J, Dr. J, um, J Jersey, I don't know what his name is. I, 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 I don't know what his name is. The other one. Um, <sighs> um, he's doing Miss Joyce's hair. And, you know, no disrespect. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just don't remember his name. Whatever. Um, he's doing Miss Joyce's hair, and Candy comes in. Candy has a conversation with Miss Joyce, and Miss Joyce is like, you know, I went to the hospital, and it's not good for me to stress over your relationship. And I'm like, okay, what, what is she trying to say? Candy's like, well, yeah, what are you trying to say? Because Candy just got finished telling her, child, when she told her mother about the freaking musical and what the musical is about her mother gave her like this look like bitch really i don't know joyce just just needs to go off continue shooting playing bingo with her sisters like she doesn't need to go somewhere like just go somewhere and just be a grandma and just be a mom from a distance like like i mean i just don't i i don't get it i don't i don't get it i i don't whatever what else happened in the show? Because you know what, I'm... Okay, I talked about everything. Let Cynthia and Peter at this table. I think... I don't think Cynthia was wrong for how she spoke to Peter. I think it was about time. You know, it, obviously it was a lot of built up animosity and frustration, but she told the world everything. 
that she sacrificed, that she stopped what she was doing to be with him. She wanted to live the Peter and Cynthia dream. And ever since they got married, it's not been happening. She's not happy. She's not satisfied. She has to work to support the family. If she doesn't work, she can't do anything. Peter's talking about, you know, maybe I should get a separate little home to just get away. And I'm like, what? Like, you don't do that in a marriage. You just don't. You don't do that in a marriage. Through sickness and health, till death do y'all part. You don't say, you don't go get off, like she said, go get a little bungalow. The next thing you'll be asking me because you're not getting sex, can I get this little, little play thing? That's pretty much it. Cynthia, I don't know, Cynthia, Cynthia grew, grew some fucking balls. She did, she grew some balls, and I respect it. They, I don't know how their relationship is gonna work. Obviously, they have problems. Peter is off spending money and not communicating to Cynthia, and Cynthia is off making money and not fucking Peter. So the two is not, it's not, it's not a good equation for a successful marriage whatsoever, and I'm not gonna be surprised if they file for divorce the way that I'm seeing it now. Y'all leave y'all comments below the video. I didn't want this to be a long review. Hopefully y'all vibe and adopted similar connections despite our differences. I'm Wesley from A Connection TV. Like this video, share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Follow me on Instagram, all of which are A Connection TV. Also, watch out for my other, uh, my other interviews coming up this year and this week, I should say, excuse me. Watch out for all my videos and take a look at the straight porn Take a look at the McConaughey Man video that I did with the straight porn star. Also, take a look at the interview that I did with the first girl from BGC 12. All right? Take a look at all the videos, especially the Relationship 101 series. Deuces.